Hi everyone, it's Jay here from Interview Query, and today I'm with Ying, who is a product analyst at Google. We're going to be talking about how to get your foot in the door for data science interviews. First off, Ying, could you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into data science? Sure. Hi, Jay. Uh, my name is Ying. Uh, it's really, really exciting to be on the show. And in terms of background, uh, as Jay has mentioned, I'm currently a product analyst DS at Google. I've been with Google for a little bit over two years. I started in the Android org, um, building machine learning models to detect harmful apps from play. And then I moved on to uh, Stadia, which is a cloud gaming team where we're building a uh, subscription model that helps users to play game via cloud, which means they don't have to uh, have the necessary like equipment. They can just log in, let's say, through Chrome to play all sorts of games anytime, anywhere they want. And in terms of how I got into data science, it's actually quite a coincidence. I graduated from MIT. I did my master at MIT, but uh, initially I wanted to get into finance. I was interested in like hedge fund and trading, but I came across this like computer science slash data science course on the main campus. I was just like taking it out of curiosity and it turns out I really enjoyed it. And from since onwards, I've been, I kind of switched gears from trading into more data science related jobs. So I started off as a data scientist in, in New York and then move on to West Coast most recently, uh, about two years ago. Nice, okay. And what was that shift like from hedge fund trading or to tech basically? Yeah, I would say the culture is very, very different. When I uh, interned on a trading floor, like it's pretty male dominated space. I was one of the only girls on the trading floor. And it was back in the days, it was like pretty stressful because it's all about like, you know, between the bell rings to the bell closes, you need to be like doing all these execution tasks with no errors, like on a very fast paced environment. And I just didn't feel like it was enjoyable for me. And then I wanted to be in a space that's more like collaborative, that's more casual and kind of like, I think the time also is a big factor because all these big tech companies on the West Coast are more flexible in terms of time. So which allows my creativity to be flow. So it's quite different. I'm really glad I made the switch. Nice. Yeah. No, I think a lot of people are in that your position as well. Starting out, what are some tips that you have that most candidates don't know about that you think they should know about when they're interviewing for jobs in data science or trying to get their foot in the door? Yeah, for sure. So I think there are three tips I thought about. First is like you talk about getting yourself in the door, right? I think, first of all, you need to have an interest in data science. I feel like a lot of the folks nowadays feels like data science is like a hot career they want to get into, just yep. maybe because of the pay, because of the glamour and all that. But ultimately, like, is this is data something you're passionate about? For me personally, because I study math, like I've done math competition back in the past, so data is always one of my passion. So ask yourself, like, is this really for you? Um, and then sometimes you might not know until you try it, right? For yeah. uh, some of you guys like who are looking to switch careers, um, maybe you're in consulting or in finance or any other fields, you think you have an interest in data. So try it out. Like a good way to try out is to do, uh, I would say like do competitions. So Kaggle was a really good like resource I've, I've used back in my days, um, not necessarily participating to start off, like just reading off of like past competitions, um, about like the solutions people have provided and see that's something of your interest and then try out some of the competitions on your own. It actually would look really good on your resume. And sometimes if I were an interview, I saw Kaggle on your resume, I might even ask like, you know, how did you build the model and all that? So like, that's definitely a plus. The first is to figure out your interest. And second is to like get yourself out there, right? Because I would say there are a lot of demand right there, like as people wanted to get into the field, but there not enough supply in terms of job position, right? Especially during COVID. So how do you get yourself out there? Uh, one way is maybe like write out media articles. I know Jay, you also have like really big media blog. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks that actually mentioned like they found your channel or they found the coaching session because of your media articles. So like getting yourself out there, write these articles and also like linking is a really good resource. 
um, not just to like reach out to recruiters, but also like maybe look for people who are in your similar background, maybe graduated from the same school and they also switch into data science, right? And then reach out to them. When you reach out, the big tip is like not to write any generic like, okay, hi, I'm interested in this position at Google. Can you refer me? Like that's a really yeah. bad approach. A really good way is try to find commonalities between the two. Maybe we graduated from the same program, right? Maybe we study the same subject. Also have switched career in the past, or maybe originally grew up in Canada. Maybe like they also came from Canada. I try to find these commonalities when you approach people on LinkedIn. So yeah, these two probably would be my top two tips. I totally agree with that statement about the people reaching out too, because I feel like a lot of the time they do just tend to, you know, it's very transactional and yeah. much better if you can hide that in some way or just express a genuine interest in maybe have the transaction go both ways where you can offer them something too. A few more questions that I think are pretty commonly asked by our subscribers are, should you ask what level you're actually interviewing for at some of these FANG companies? I had one member who was asking about basically what they needed to know before the interview. And mm -hmm. they're wondering like basically how hard they had to study based on what level they're going to interview for. So what do you think about just asking the recruiter for like more information about stuff like that? Yeah, I think asking for the level is actually super, super important. I'm not speaking of all the companies. I think majority of the fan company, in my experience, they do put you up for a level when you're interviewed for a certain position. So for example, at Google, we have this like level system, like from level two, three, four, like all, all the way to like six, seven and above. So you will be put up for a certain level before you go interview and depends on your interview performance. Let's say you really outperform, right? Like maybe outstanding across all your interviews. There could be a possibility of up leveling it, but it, the possibility is fairly low, unless in the cases I explained, like the, the candidate is really, really strong. So pretty much most of the time, the level you're interviewing for is fixed in a way, unless you, you know, perform really poorly or perform really, really well. So it's really important to check with the interview ahead of time. Let's say if, if you're not happy with the level you're interviewing for, let's say you're put up a four, but you really think you deserve a five based on your experience and maybe you're outperformer in your previous job, right? So it yeah. would be a waste of time you interview for four and then later on you find out it's a four, you're not happy with it and you might have to re-interview. That's yeah. why I feel like asking the level, it's super, super important. And then don't be afraid of asking the recruiters any other stuff. I think one of the questions Jay also brought up previous is like, what are the other questions you should ask, right? So mm -hmm. um, my other two tips, one of it is like definitely ask about, if you can ask about the team and the interviewers, that you will be interviewing with. Um, sometimes recruiter don't tell you straight off the bat if you don't ask for these specific information. And sometimes they would not give you, uh, but it's completely fine if they don't give you. The reason being is it's very likely uh, for the interviewer to ask you their domain of expertise. Let's say I work for like Uber Eats, right? then I'm more likely to ask you like a problem I'm currently facing because as a data scientist myself, like I wanted to see if I were to hire you into my team, how would you solve this problem? Like, do you deserve this hire or not? So having like sort of research on the team, the, you know, the potential problems you're facing. And then on the interviewer, the reason being is you can search up their LinkedIn. Like some interviewer might be more technical. Let's say they are PhD background, right? Like, so your question might be more on the technical side or like some will be maybe f f coming from a consulting background. So more be on the more business side. So you can kind of tailor your response towards your interviewer's area of expertise. Maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense for you to talk a lot about like, Ideal values or like singular value decomposition to someone from the consulting background, right? So tailor your response based on the interview, uh, interviewer's background. That all comes down to the, how much research you should do um, ahead of time. Yeah, that's great advice, I think. And I don't think many people think about that in their interview prep. They just study a lot of random things and then try to maybe do a little bit more memorization versus like kind of custom tailorization of the responses and such. Yeah, exactly. Because every interview is different and then every interviewer is different. For the same question, like you might have to go complete 
like opposite direction, depending on interviewer's preference. And they might lead you one way over the other. So it's really important for you to be smart, to know like what your interviewer is looking for, and then try to like hit these specific points they're looking for. And then the last question I have for you is more about like your resume. So mm -hmm. uh, one question from a member was about, uh, should you put data scientist in your title, even if you're not officially a data scientist? But they added that they were like a senior analyst and were basically doing like what they thought to be data science work. And so the yeah. question is just like, how much can you tailor your resume? Yeah, I think that's a really, really great question. I think it depends on the type of work you're currently doing. If you're already doing data scientist type of work, I think it's okay to put data scientist in your title. You can even, another way to write it, you can even slash it. If you, like, let's say you have a analyst title, right, in your current mm -hmm. position, but then you're also doing data scientist work, you can do like slash data scientist as like alternative. And the reason being is like a lot of these companies use like algorithms to pick up, like they, they receive like thousands of hundreds and thousands of resume, right? Like they probably go, don't go through it manually. So these machines like are looking for these keywords. So if you don't have it somewhere, then you might miss out. So I think a good way is like write both if you're already doing like both of these type of work. Um, I think that could be a good solution. Gotcha. For the, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I uh, have done that before too, where I basically changed my title to be like data scientist and then like a dash and then it'd be like machine learning. If it was like yeah. more machine learning focus work and then changing that to be like more product analytics, if it was more product analyst work, I think that does help. It, like, it doesn't matter as much opposed to some other metrics, like how many years of experience you have. I've done this when I was like a new grad too. And I didn't get that many calls back just because I think people just didn't think I had enough experience for like the role that they wanted. Titles yeah, do matter, totally. but mm -hmm. I wonder how much they really do. Yeah, totally. I think ultimately like you have to know the title you're put on. Like you have to be subject matter expertise in that area because yeah. even if you pass the resume around, like you won't be able to pass the interview around. So ultimately it's the same, but yeah, you're right. Like getting yourself pass that resume around, the title could make a difference. Yep. Lastly, any other general tips or pieces of advice before we wrap up? I think we focus a lot of these like sessions around interviewer, like interviewees. The other very important person in this whole like process is the recruiter. So mm -hmm. I mentioned you need to also build a good relationship with the recruiter because even though they're not the decision maker, but they also help you out throughout the process, right? They, they get a basically get a quota kickback if they, they want you to get hired basically at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. So work with them um, closely. So, and then try to build relationship too. So one other tip is I mentioned already, like ask as much about the team and the interview process, like what questions are likely to be asked, the structure, those, but also like not be afraid to push back in certain cases, right? Yeah. So I think a quick tip is around scheduling. So a lot of, I think the candidates are cramming last minute, right? Like going yeah. on interview queries or looking for coaching sessions, like the week before the interview taking place. And sometimes yeah. a lot of these take longer practice than a week. Um, doing multiple mocks in certain cases, right? To get yourself more familiar with the process, you know, mm -hmm. fix your area of improvements. So sometimes it takes longer. So what I'm trying to say is even if your interview is scheduled for next week, if let's say your coach feels like you're not really ready, right? So yeah. it's better to tell the recruiter to push back the interview until you're ready. Reason being is that a lot of these companies, at least like for Google or Facebook, others, like there's a freeze period of one year until you can interview again. So try to be as much prepared, always, always over prepared and under prepared and not be afraid of pushing back on recruiter in certain cases. And they will, they will also respect that. I remember when I was like new grad, I was like so scared of like offending the recruiter or like yeah. making any changes in any way, I think uh, it's totally fine. Same with the level. Like if you're not happy with the level you're offering, you can ask the recruiter straight up and then explain like you feel like you're more senior level than the level they're putting you up for. Is it okay for me to interview for a higher level? Because yeah. given my year of experience and expertise and all that. Yep, yeah, I agree. 
Cool. Thanks for coming on. And mm -hmm. if you want to hear more or talk to Ying, you can check out the links below and then also schedule some coaching sessions. Oh, yeah. Thanks for uh, bringing this up. I also have a YouTube channel, you guys, you which is, yeah, which is like based on finance and investment. So if you're interested, uh, feel free to check it out yes. as well. Yes. Yeah. I almost forgot about that. Also sign up for interview, career, and coaching sessions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Ying. Bye.